First of all, I would like to thank the organizer to allow me the possibility to show you some of my research that I'm doing in the Max Planck Institute in, uh, in Köln. And the title of my presentation is Implant the Organization of the Apical Stem Cell Niche Change During Floral Transition. And this will allow me the opportunity to speak about two of my passion about plant uh, biology that are apical stem cell niche and floral transition. So uh, here in the first slide, I would like to show you the model organism that I'm using for carrying my research. Actually in the plant biology field is kind of common and is uh, the model plant Arabidopsis thaliana. And as you can observe in this picture, there is like a, a, a picture of the areal part of these plants. And as you can see, there are different organ form in the, in the areal part of the plant, like the leaf, the flower, the stem, and the, and the branches. And what I always found very interesting is that all these areal organ are formed from the same apical tissue that is located in the tip of the plants and is called the shoot apical meristem. The shoot apical meristem is particularly important because contain one of the plant stem cell niche. And as you can see from this cartoon, the, the tissue is maintaining differentiating thanks to a very complicated network of subregion that has specific function that allow the tissue to stay indifferentiated. In particular, here in blue, in the middle of the, the tissue, there is a region called the organizing center. The organizing center is an inductive niche and the few cells that are belonging from this uh, uh, region are important because are producing signaling that are able to move inside the meristematic tissue and maintain the stem cell indifferentiated. In particular, these signal are moving into the tip of the plants in this oral region that is called the central zone tip. And here is where the stem cells are located. And these are the cells that are keeping indifferentiated. Also, if after slowly dividing, they could fed in the lateral part of the tissue that here is represented in green and is called the peripheral zone. When the cells from the central zone are fading into the peripheral zone, they start to actively divide it and to move from the tip of the tissue to the lateral part until they are recruited in this uh, yellowish region that is where the primordia start to differentiate and acquire identity. And the primordia could be different as we see from the architecture, from leaves to flower to meristem, uh, axillary meristem. And finally, another important region of this tissue is the rib zone. The rib zone is located below the organizing center and start to have an importance uh, when the plants are to produce the stem. So this is the region that is important for the stem production. And there are different genes that are maintaining this tissue indifferentiated, but two are, are keen for, uh, for this um, meristematic maintenance. And one is the homeobox transcription factor Bushel that is expressed in the organizing center and as a non-cell autonomous function. Indeed, after the protein is produced, it's able to move to the, organ to the central zone. And in the central zone, is able to activate both genes that are maintaining the meristem indifferentiated and also another very important gene that is uh, clavata 3. Clavata 3 indeed is encoding for a small peptide that has the role to maintain the size of the stem cell niche uh, constant. In fact, uh, clavata 3 is able to move from the central zone into the organizing center and activate a signaling cascade that repress bushel. And uh, I'm listing these two genes because what happens if they get mutated is that the plants get into severe uh, defect in the architecture. Indeed, if Wuschel get mutated, as you can appreciate, the stem cell niche is not able to stay indifferentiated and the plant is just able to produce few leaves and few organs before the meristem completely terminate. Vice versa, when clavata tree is mutated, what happens is that the stem cells inside the shoot apical meristem start to incontrolly dividing and accumulate until the meristem get huge and produce over numeral of uh, primordia. And uh, this extra primordia indeed affected heavily the architecture of the plants. 
And in the past year, several groups were interested in understanding if uh, uh, environmental stimuli could affect actually the organization of the shoot apical meristem. And indeed what they found is that the stimuli like temperature, light and nutrient availability can actually affect the size and the shape of the meristem via the changing in the expression of clavata tree and bushel. And when I started my postdoc, I had a very um, defined question that is how the development and if the development could also affect the organization of the inner region of the shoot apical meristem. And to approach this question, what I decide to do is to use uh, uh, the floral transition as a developmental process to study how the, the shoot apical meristem organization change during development. Why floral transition? Well, first, because it's a very fundamental developmental stage into the plant life cycle. Indeed, it allowed the procedure from the vegetative grow, where the plant is able to produce leaves for the majority, into the inflorescence stage, where you see the plants start to change completely the architecture. The stem is formed, and on top of the stem, the flowers are, are produced. And the second reason why I choose to use floral transition like a model developmental state is because uh, there were some data that showed that during floral transition, the morphology of this tissue is heavily affected. Indeed, when we check the morphology of a vegetative meristem, we could appreciate that the tissue is very small, accumulate few cells, but as the transition start to progress, uh, the meristem start to accumulate cells, the tissue become bigger until uh, is reaching the inflorescence meristem stage, where the tissue is overall bigger with uh, accumulating cells. And this is very specific of floral transition. Indeed, if we uh, make an experiment in which we keep the plants in a condition in which a floral transition is not induced, you can appreciate that the volume of the cells, the meristem area, and, uh, and the number of the cells in this tissue is not really changing in the different days after, after uh, keeping the plants in non-inductive condition. But when we induce floral transition here, thanks to environmental stimuli, you can see that very quickly after the induction, the meristematic tissue start to get bigger, the area of the surface of the meristem get larger, the cell volume get larger, and at the end you finish to have much more cells in, uh, in the meristem surface respect to before the transition is started. And so how to like approach this pro problem about uh, the fact that the morphology is changing, but is also the inner part of the tissue changing in response to floral transition or is maintained constant? And uh, to address this question, what I did, I use uh, two marker lines for different region of the meristem that I will uh, talk about during all this uh, talk. And one is the clavata tree uh, transcriptional marker line that is uh, here uh, used to highlight the cells in the central zone tip. And the other one is the bushel transcriptional marker line that I use to highlight the cells of the organizing center. And when I conduct this experiment during development, what I could observe is that both these two regions, the central zone and the organizing center, were changing through development. Indeed, if we focus on the tip of the tissue where the central zone is, we can appreciate that there is a, an increase in the number of, uh, of a layer of cells that are expressing uh, clavata tree in the tip and also in the bottom during the transition there is a huge enlargement of, of the region that gets the organizing center to elongate in the deep region of the tissue and uh, to better quantify the changes that were uh, happening during this developmental stage what we start to do was design some quantitative pipeline in order to describe the domain shape and indeed the the tissue level quantification pipeline is able to give us information about the height of this domain and the width of this domain. 
And uh, and when we we did that with the marker that we use to uh, uh, highlight the different region, we could observe that when we analyze the central uh, zone domain, we could see that both in the height the TR is in uh, in circle, and in the width the TR is with the triangle. They are both changing from the vegetative stage in which they are very small, and they increase in size when the inflorescence is established. And uh, and that different is what we could observe the, when we analyze how we're behaving the organizing center. Indeed, when we did this exercise for this deep region of the tissue, we could observe that the width of the tear is with triangle were not changing a lot in morphology and in size during floral transition. But what we observe is that uh, transiently, the height of the tissue here with the dots increase exactly when the transition is occurring to come back uh, to the same uh, height when the transition is ended. So we already here had an idea about the fact that the different domain of the meristematic tissue are not really acting the same during development, and they could be disproportionately growing also in different direction. And finally, what we also observed is that uh, when we measure the width of the peripheral zone, we could observe that as we, we saw in the central zone, there is an enlargement in the peripheral region that gets much more bigger when the inflorescence is established respect to the vegetative stage. And, uh, and so, as I said before, this makes us to conclude that the different region of the meristem are not responding actually identically to development, but are kind of changing the way to respond to developmental cues. And to have a deeper understanding of what was going on, we decide to perform also an extra level of, uh, of quantification. And we pass from the tissue level quantification into a 3D single cell level segmentation. So what we did, we were able to segment the nuclei belonging from the shoot apical meristem and the cells belonging to this tissue. And when we combine this two data, what we could extract from this analysis was uh, more information about the morphological changes happening in this tissue, like the position of the domain of interest, but also the number and the volume of the cells that we were like studying. And here I would like to show you some extra data about that. So regarding the position of the domain, what we could observe is that in the case of the central zone here in orange and of the organizing center here in blue, what we could see is that the central zone handed, so the end of the central zone is getting deeper into the tissue transiently during floral transition, and then is going to be back uh, nearest to the tip when the transition is over. And similarly is what we observed from the organizing center, but in this case, not just uh, checking the bottom part, but also the beginning of the domain is actually changing in position in respect to the tip of the tissue. So you see both, they are elongating during floral transition, and then when the transition ended, is getting back on the tip. That is accordingly also with this uh, inflation that we saw into the, the meristematic tissue during development. And finally, what we could do was to really quantify the number of the cells in every single region of, this, of the tissue in a 3D fashion manner. So the data I will show you are 3D data. And uh, when we went to analyze what happened to the central zone, we could observe that if in the vegetative meristem, the number of nuclei is constrained to 50, during floral transition, there is a huge increase in the number of cells that are uh, belonging to the central zone. And, uh, and this number get larger and stay larger when the inflorescence is established. The speed the number of nuclei are increasing during floral transition, what we could observe also is that the volume of the cells was changing during development. And indeed, if in the vegetative meristem we could observe bigger cells in this region, through development, the size of these cells gets smaller. That is accordingly fitting with the fact that they are actively dividing. 
And overall, the speed of this, the size of the domain is stay larger when the inflorescence is established respect to the vegetative meristem. And for what concerns the organizing center, we find different situation. So what we could observe is that the number of nuclei in this region is kind of increasing during the floral transition, but just transiently and reaches peak when the transition is occurring. And then is going back to be less when the transition ended. In terms of nuclei uh, um, of cell volume, we observe indeed something very similar to what we observe is in the central zone. And indeed the, the cells that were much bigger in the beginning start to slowly become smaller at the end. Meaning again, that maybe the cell cycle is like increasing in, a, in a rate and more cells are accumulated during floral transition. But what we found interesting is that at the beginning, I told you we were using clavata tree and bushel like marker of this region. And in literature was known that there are few cells between the two regions, the central zone and the organizing center in which both clavata tree and bushel are expressed. And uh, we call them the overlapping region between the central zone and the organizing center. And actually what we found interestingly is that this overlapping region here in purple seems to be the more stable during development in the stem cell niche. Indeed, when we check a number of nuclei, cell volume, but also the domain volume, we could observe that, that there is not a lot of difference between the different time point in which we, we check them. So this region is very stable and is keep stable during all the developmental process. And so to conclude this very short talk, what I, I tried to, to show you today is that we know that during floral transition, some morphological changes are happening in the, in the tissue. But uh, these morphological uh, changes are uh, made also a reorganization of the inner tissue of, of the meristem. And indeed, the different region of this tissue behave differently. Indeed, the central zone is start to increase and stay larger when the inflorescence is established. There is this overlapping region between central zone and organizing center that is not changing much during floral transition. There is the elongation of the organizing center into the rib region that is very transient and specific for floral transition during floral transition. And finally, we also identify that the peripheral zone is getting larger uh, during uh, this process and stay larger when the inflorescence is established. And all this study that is very descriptive for a matter of time, I didn't have time to show you the genes that are involved on that. So in the lab, we are studying some of the genes that are involved in this process, in particular, focusing on the side of genes that we know are important for floral transition progression. And what we are finding is that not all of the genes that we know are involved in floral transition progression has an effect in every single region of the meristem. And so what we are trying to characterize is like how one gene is affecting one region and not the other, and how is the crosstalk between the floral transition pathway and the, uh, the meristem maintenance pathway. And with that, I would like to conclude my talks. And, and to thank you for your attention and uh, George Kuplan that is hosting me during my postdoc and several colleagues that helped me during this trip. And uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Martina. So um, for those of you who've joined us just uh, during her talk, um, it was a beautiful talk and there is a, a, play, a button at the bottom called Q&A if you have questions in there. Um, as that gets populated, um, I'll just start with a couple of questions. We've got time for, for a couple here. Um, so um, one of the um, uh, things that, that's quite striking in here is this kind of phase in which cells are expanding quite a lot before they divide. 
And often when I think about meristems, people talk about cytokinin, a hormone that's very involved in cell division. And so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that kind of delay, what, you know, growth and then division rather than maybe what we would have thought that division would immediately ramp up. Yeah, no, it, it's exactly a very good question. So cytokinin is one of the topics we are touching at the moment. Also, because we know there is a heavy connection between one of these players that is Bushel and the cytokinin. So we are identifying that the cell cycle and the cytokinin signaling are changing during floral transition. And we are trying to identify also how they are changing in the different region. Again, this is very important and is very important in this field, in my opinion, to be specific because based on really like few cells of difference, you can have different effects in the cell cycle. Like we are seeing in the periphery seems to have a heavy proliferation, for example, and other region in which we don't see a lot of proliferation, like this overlapping region. So it's something we are for sure investigating and we are going to have more data or next time I can show you more data <laughs> about this. Okay, so one of the um, questions in the Q&A is um, also kind of thinking about hormones, but a slightly different one. So this is from um, Amina Chowdhury, who says, very impressive work, Martina. Did you look at pin mutants or polarization of auxin in the context of this domain expansion? Um, they'd love to know more about that. Yeah, we are looking about, uh, well, pin mutant no still, but is in the 2D list, I have to say. But the oxygen polarization, yes, we are looking on that and we are finding that there are differences in particularly and specifically when the periphery get bigger during floral transition, we are identifying differences in the oxygen signaling and the position of the primordia. Um, so another question from uh, Juan Alonso Serra. Um, who there's actually a couple of questions around the same theme, um, which is a question about what's the fate of these cells? So what's the fate of the cells in this overlapping region? This is a great question. <laughs> well, this is a great question. At the moment for us, this uh, overlapping region is a bit uh, strange because it's a region that is expressing both Vushel and clavatatri. We know Vushel protein is also present in this cell. We don't know about clavatatri peptide. By the way, if he's having a function there, should go outside the cells and bind the ligand there. So we don't know mechanistically how he's going to work that region and we are started to investigate that. For sure, what makes is very, very difficult for us is that there is not like a promoter to target these specific cells. So at the moment, what we are trying to do is changing approach and try to build a mathematical model on that in order to have some insight about what could happen mechanistically. And, but yes, biologically will be very, very interesting to check these cells more specifically, but we first have to be able to target exactly this one. 